Hi folks and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to break down this animation of nanopore sequencing. I'm going to limit the scope of this video to just the technical aspects of how to get this animation going. To follow along, you'll need two things, the molecular nodes add-on by Brady Johnson to import protein structures and the DNA strands. At the point of making this video, I'll be using version 4.0.12. I'll also be using the quick static bilayer asset from the CG Figures asset library. Both of these resources are free, but I strongly encourage you to make a donation as both of these people have put considerable time and effort into making these fantastic tools. Assuming you have both ready to go, let's get started. So to begin, the first thing I'm going to do is bring in the membrane. So to do that, I'm going to open up my asset browser. And if you've installed the asset library correctly, you should have the CG figures assets all available to you here. And in the biology tab, you want to look for the quick static bilayer. So go ahead and drag that into your scene. So the first thing I'm going to do is just come to the modifiers tab so I can control this bilayer a bit more. Let's go ahead and make the size of each of these phospholipids smaller. So you want to go ahead and downscale your phospholipid. And I also want to drop the spacing so that we can pack them more densely. Let's try 0.2. Yep, anything like this is fine. The next thing I'm going to do is create a little crevice on the edge for the nanopore protein to sit in eventually. If I don't color away some of these lipids, these lipids will poke through the cross section of the nanopore and interfere with the passing DNA. I'm just going to switch off the modifier in the real time view. So I just see the plane, this lipid membrane is made. I'm going to tab into edit mode and come to edge and just subdivide to create some subdivisions. And to create a notch, I'm going to select this central set of edges here, control B to bevel and just pull out to create another sort of set of faces. Let's create a loop cut by selecting one of the edges and control R and let's just bring that loop cut all the way to the edge and then enabling face select. I'm just going to delete this most extreme face to create this little notch. And so now if I turn back on the membrane, I basically have a little crevice where the nanopore can eventually sit and the membrane sort of gives way. We also don't really need this full membrane. So what I might also do is select this entire back edge in edit mode and bring it in a bit towards the front. So now we're just limiting the number of lipids we have to distribute to make up our membrane. So I'm running all of this in cycles. You might want to be using EV if your computer struggles. But the one thing I want to change now is the material of these individual lipids. Right now, I think there's some subsurface scattering going by default. So I'm going to disable that. So in the modify tab under phospholipid, I'm going to come down and select straight phospholipid style 2. So that gives us straight legs rather than curved legs, just to simplify the geometry. Then I'm going to come up to the phospholipid pairs collection where all of these individual objects are kept up to straight phospholipid pair 2. I'm going to disable the subdivision from both viewport and render and come to the material properties and I'm going to come to subsurface and where the weight is currently set to 1 I'm just going to drop that to 0. So now there's no subsurface it's just a diffuse plasticky looking material. So that's our membrane done. Let's go ahead and start importing our proteins. So for this animation, I followed this recent Nature Chemistry review on nanopore sequencing and just following their figure, I used PDB structures for UV3 for the nanopore protein and 3UPU for the helicase. And so if you come to the scene properties where you'll find molecular nodes where we can import the protein. So in the PDB section, just type our PDB required. So let's start with the nanopore or UV3. I'm going to enable build assembly and also center structure. Click fetch and there is our nanopore protein. Let's do the same for the helicase, for UPU and fetch. So let's go ahead and just do a little bit of tinkering in geometry nodes to get them looking how we want. I'm going to go ahead and open a new window and turn it into geometry nodes. Let's start with the nanopore. But for this, all I'm going to do is just change the styling from style spheres to a surface. So all I'm going to do is first delete style spheres. And then after the assembly for UV3 node, I'm going to first realize my instances. And then I'm going to look for a style surface node and drop that in. The quality by default is set to 3 and that gives quite a lot of geometry which I don't currently need. So I'm just going to drop to quality 2. I also want to rotate this guy so I want a transform geometry node. Let's place him after there and let's set the rotation in the x to 90. So now that points the nanopore in the correct direction and let's slot him back in to our membrane. So here's our membrane and let's just translate our nanopore so that he sits nicely in the notch we made earlier. 
we might need to also scale up this nanopore, maybe something like 1.5. So now our nanopore is sitting comfortably in our little membrane notch. I also want to create a cutaway. So I want to delete some of this geometry to show the actual pore structure inside. So to do that, I'm just going to add a delete geometry just before the assembly node. And then all I want to do is say delete by comparing and set the data type to float. Look for a position node and a separate XYZ. And I want to say parts of the membrane that are greater than or equal to a certain value in the X direction get deleted. So I'm just going to use that and toggle the second B value until I get a suitable looking cross section. At this point, you might need to translate the nanopore to make it sort of sit at the edge of the membrane as before. I'm also going to override the material for this. So there's some default shaders applied to this protein, but I kind of want this all to have the same material. So I'm just going to add a set material node after my transform geometry. And I'm going to come to the shader properties tab, create a new material, call this nanopore. And I want a sort of bluish rough material, just a very simple diffuse shader. And now we have my nanopore. So with that done, let's go ahead and deal with our helicase. The one thing we do need to do is actually select the protein and get rid of the nucleotide because this structure comes with both a protein and a nucleotide. So same as before, I'm just going to delete style spheres first and just do the same old style surface. Again, setting the equality to two. And you can see in the shading, this is all the protein and then inside there's a, a bit of DNA actually sort as part of the structure. So what we want is we come to molecular nodes, selection, and I want to find separate polymers. So if I drop that between the color set and assembly node, you get the option to select just the peptide or the nucleic acid. And I want just the protein, right? So just the peptide. And so there we now have our helicase structure as well. I may want to change the material. Again, set material node. I'm just going to create a material called helicase. And I think in the animation, I had this more as like a, a pinkish purplish color. So I'm going to select that here. So if I bring back the nanopore, I'm going to need to do a little bit of transforming again. So let's add a transform geometry. To keep the scaling representative, I'm going to apply the same scaling as I did for the nanopore protein. Let's set the scale of the helicase to also 1.5 in XYZ, so that the same relative size. And let's go ahead and reposition. So let's see where we've gotten to. We now have a helicase on top of a nanopore sitting in a membrane. So that's our base setup done. Let's go ahead and deal with the DNA. So I'm going to just hide all of this for now. So to create the DNA, you need to first add a Bezier curve. So Shift A, Curve, Bezier. Create a new geometry node setup. I'm going to call this DNA. And you now want to go to Shift A, Molecular Nodes, DNA, and look for the double helix node. And that will initially not do anything. And that's because we haven't given the node any base pairs, for instance, on the curve. So now you want to also add the bases. So go ahead and connect up the bases. I'm going to style these by coming to Molecular Nodes, Style, and set them to Spheres. Again, if you're working in Eevee, you can toggle EB on and off to convert from points to real spheres. In my animation, I had the backbone as white. So you can change that by toggling the colors in the DNA basis node. I'm going to set this to a whitish color. To create the threading effect of DNA, I'm actually going to create two curves, one curve for each single strand of DNA that comes in together first and then gets split as they pass through the helicase. We're going to first map out the path of the strand of DNA that's going to come through, unwind and pass straight through the pore and come out the other end. So I'm just going to disable the geometry nodes while we work. And the important thing to do here is to make sure that this end of the default Bezier curve corresponds to the starting point of your DNA path. And this side is the end point. So let's go ahead and position our Bezier curve. Okay, so if I tab into edit mode, I'm going to take the spline control handles, rotate them around, and also extrude some new ones to draw out the path that I want this DNA to take. And the trick here is that you want to draw the entire path. So not just the path that the DNA will originally start, but also where you expect the single strand to go after it's passed through the nanopore. And so if I enable back, the DNA, you'll see that I've got DNA all the way through this path. So the first thing I'm going to do is apply a delete geometry, and I want to set it to instance and a compare node in the input socket, look for index. And then I want to say where the index is greater than or equal to a certain value, I want to delete. You'll see that that's sort of worked, except that it deleted the complementary strand. So I've only got a single strand of DNA. So what I want in this node setup 
is a separate geometry node. And I'll basically want to separate the base instances. So set the separate geometry to instance based on an attribute that's given to the DNA, which is a chain ID. And this chain ID determines whether the bases are part of one of the single strands or the other complementary strand. So if I look for a named attribute and type in chain ID, you should find that already comes up. And I want this chain ID selection as a as a parameter I can toggle from the outside. If I temporarily just mute this delete geometry and toggle the chain ID, you should find that you have single strands in both cases, but they sort of offset as I toggle between them. And that's just basically toggling between the two complementary strands, which obviously have an offset. And so for this strand, Right. I want it to be one of the single strand DNAs. And what we're going to do is we're going to overlay the same curve set to the other chain ID. So we recreate double strand DNA before the helicase. And then once it passes here, the curve is going to split off for the other one and it's going to be the other single strand DNA. If this doesn't make much sense, you'll see very shortly what I mean. Next, I want a way to be able to make all of this DNA move along this curve that I've mapped it onto. And for that, we need to look a little bit inside of this DNA double helix node. So if I select this group and tab in, essentially I want this offset value as a parameter I can control from the outside. So what I'm going to do is just connect the offset input for the molecular nodes utils curve resample node to the group input. So now I have an offset parameter that I can control from the outside. And to make this whole chain animate itself, I'm going to look for a scene time node from the seconds. I'm just going to look for a math, set it to divide so that we can control the speed a bit, set it to five for now and plug that in. So now if I press play, you'll see that the DNA slowly passes its way through the nanopore. Okay, so we have the first strand of single strand DNA. I want to create the second one, which doesn't pass through the pore, but comes out the side of the helicase. So to do that, shift D to duplicate, we're going to call this part two. And first set this guy to be chain ID of one. And so if I overlay with path one, DNA path one, these two parts combined, now create double strand DNA up to the nanopore. But the way we're going to make this different now is by using the second path. I'm going to write for it a different trajectory by changing the curve shape. So with path two selected in edit mode, I'm going to dissolve all of the vertices past the helicase, take the last control point, and I'm going to extrude a bunch of new points that's going to serve as path for this leaving bit of single strand DNA. So now with the two DNA parts enabled and I click play, you'll see you get this kind of effect, right? So you've got double strand DNA entering, and because we've got two different chain IDs for them, they add up to make double strand DNA at the start, but then because the curve parts diverge at the helicase, they split off into the individual single strands. One thing that I did in my animation is I added a little bit of unwinding. So the DNA is no longer wound in the same helix structure after it passes through. I wanted to sort of straighten out a bit. And the parameter we want to control for that is the unwind. So unwind is set to one by default. That's just properly wound up. If I set it to zero, it'll be fully unwound. Now I only want the unwinding to happen after the strand leaves the helicase. So we need a little bit of a proximity effect going to control this. So what I'm going to do is look for a select cube. And so this gives you an empty with which to do some proximity calculations with. So let's just select this. And so essentially what I want is the zero one input from this select cube. And I'm going to use this empty to define a region in which I want the single strands to be unwound. So to do that, I'm going to take the empty, just move and rotate them around a bit. And the important thing is I only want the parts of single strand DNA to be affected, not the double strand. So I sort of have to angle this cube a little bit to overlap with the single strand. To make sure that the unwinding is really limited to just the single strand, go ahead and change the from max value and also the positioning so like this. And now, for example, you see, so that's our selective unwinding. You can also equally animate rotation by plugging in the scene time. If you do, just make sure you plug into both the rotation second strand and rotation to have both strands of DNA rotating, right? So now you can have DNA rotating into the helicase. Okay, and so that's the main component of the animation. All that's left to do is set yourself enough frames for the animation. You should have enough runway to watch the entire double strand DNA pass all the way through. If I sort of speed it up a bit, so divide by two rather than five, we can basically thread through the entire double strand. So one thing that's interesting here is that midway through the animation, you're getting part of one of the strands reappearing at the start of the curve. And that's what happens if you do not give yourself enough curve runway for this single strand DNA to pass along. So this is corresponding to this one. So all I would need to do is just extrude out a few more times to give it enough curve runway. Right, so now all of the, the strands have passed through. 
And that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Please leave a like and a comment as always if you would like to see more content like this. Subscribe for more tutorials and I will see you all next time. Bye bye for now.